So the uh, confidence intervals that we're going to look at, basically this is the idea, is if I went to say, oh, I don't know, say that I went over to the Montessori school uh, across the field from us, and I was to take 10 random people, what do you think the average height would be? Give me a number. Three feet? Four feet? All right. I'm, okay, then after school, okay, so then I, maybe I might be inclined to make a bad claim, like, okay, people who go to school um, in this area have an average height of three feet tall, right? I just took some data, I gathered my statistics, and my average was three feet tall. But that's, that's not a good statistic, right? Or maybe on the other side of things, after school I go to the gym and the basketball team is playing, and I, I ask them all for their heights, and they go, oh, look at that. I'm, not, I'm wrong. It's not three feet. They're actually 6'4". The average student on, on, in this school ground is 6'4". So the problem with our data can be, you know, if I take too small of a group, I don't get good data involved. If I asked every student at Johnson Heights, at um, William F. Davidson, and the Montessori, I'd have a much better average than if I just picked, you know, five or ten of them. So... <laughs> It's not every day that you get a mouse, and, uh, but anyway. Uh, so the point is, we want to be able to speak about how confident we are about our data, and that's what a confident interval is going to help us with, is um, the more items we pick in our data, probably the more confident we are about the results. So for example, you might read something like, a recent poll shows a conservative candidate has 57% of the vote, 19 out of 20 times, with a margin of error of 2.5%. Usually, if you read it in the paper, that's all they report to the paper. And this section here is typically what is in the little asterisks and the, and the small print underneath the graph or whatever they show you. So they're inclined to just say, hey, look, 57, this, we predict the conservative candidate is going to win because they have 57% of the vote. But obviously, they didn't spend the money and the time to go out and poll every single voter. They probably phoned a group of them. You know, the more voters they poll, the more accurate that poll is going to be. So let me show you what the confidence interval looks like, and we'll talk about what this means. If we had 57% of the vote and the margin of error is 2.5%, the first thing we want to figure out is what's 2.5% of 57%? So that's um, 1.425% is the margin of error. So that means that on the worst case scenario, we would expect the range to go from 57 minus 1.425 to 57 plus 1.425. So the confidence interval, and I'm running out of space, I'll just put CI, is going to go from 55.575% to 58.5%. Oops. Um, actually, I can probably do that without... Uh, that'll be 58.425%. So this is what they're trying to report to you is that 57 is the average, but we're really confident about it being uh, greater than 55.75% and less than 48 point, somewhere in the middle there. Okay, the number, the real number of voters, we expect when we actually take the election, we'll find the real number somewhere in the middle of 55 and 58 there. Okay? Now, the other thing that's important is this part here that says 19 times out of 20. And what that is, is that's the confidence level. That's the next part there. So what they're saying is um, 19 out of 20 is 95%. Um, they're saying they have a confidence level in their statistics of 95%. So here's what the statement actually means if you were to look at it from the statistics point of view. 95% of the time, they believe that when they actually take the poll they're going to get a result that's in the middle. So that's pretty good. Sometimes it'll be in, sometimes it'll be out, but most of the time their measurement is gonna come where somewhere in there and the conservative candidate would win, right? So that's what the confidence interval does. It gives us a range of values for our measurement 
and it tells us how confident we are that the, uh, tr the measurement we're going to take is going to appear in there. So, you know, maybe it is election day, and maybe on election day, they actually end up with 56.5% uh, of the vote. Well, that's one of those times where they're in the middle of the range there, and the paper was correct. It's somewhere in the middle. Okay. So, um, let's try repeating this. Oh, sorry, sorry. Here, I'll pause so you guys can... Uh... So, let's discuss uh, the next question there and see how we're doing. So remember, a margin of error is telling you about how much above and below the uh, average that was measured that they feel that would be a, for this confidence interval. So the uh, measurement of 3%, that's 0 0.03, and it's 64 inches. So it could be 3% above and 3% below. So 3% of 64 is 1.92 inches. And that means the bottom is going to be 64 minus 1.92. This is 3% below. And that's 62, oops, 62.08. And the top of the confidence interval is 64 plus 1.92. So 65.92. So my confidence interval would be 62.08 to 65.92. So I'll leave that there for you. Um, what I'd like you to do is see if you can work backwards. I'm going to give you the confidence interval. If you know this is the confidence interval, could you figure out the average weight and the margin of error? Okay. So I'll let you think about it for a minute. Okay, so um, people that figured it out, what was the average? 18. It is 18. Um, how did you know that it was 18? Yeah, it's directly in the middle. So, for example, if you went 15, 18, it's right in the middle there. There's three above, three below. So how do you do it if you can't, you know, magically see what the difference is? Yeah. Uh, 21 minus 15 divided by 2. Yeah, that's one way to do it. So the difference, you could try, you could say um, 21 minus 15 divided by 2. That's 6 divided by 2, which is 3. And that's how you'd know that there was 3 on either side. Yeah, or you could add those two together. You could say, or 21 plus 15 divided by 2. That's 36 divided by 2. That's 18. That's right in the middle. How do you get the middle of the two values? Add them together and cut them in half. Okay, so that's another way you could do it. But the average value is 18. Now, remember, when we talk about margin of error, uh, we've already figured out that it's uh, 3 pounds. But margin of error is usually quoted as a percent. So how would we figure out? We don't want to say three pounds. How would we say it as a percentage? What about three? How do you figure out the percentage? Anyone have an idea of, uh, you're definitely going to use Three is the value, right? It's going three pounds above and three pounds below. So how do you get a percentage out of that? Yeah, Paul, you wanted to take a shot at it? Uh, three divided by 18. Yeah, so that's how we get the margin of error. Three pounds out of 18, which is um, not very good. It looks like almost 17%. Yeah, so we'll call it 16.7%. So the margin of error is 16.7%. So that's, that's all you need to do for confidence intervals in our course, is you need to be able to find one. You need to be able to find a margin of error. Um, you need to be able to discuss um, what its confidence level is. The last thing uh, that we just want to make sure you understand, is it OK if I leave it here? Is that, is that high enough? OK. Um, 
is how these things affect each other. So for example, let's say John is gathering some data on 100 people, and he has a confidence level of 90%. By the way, these, these values, like the confidence level, the margin of error, these are much more complicated math uh, formulas and things that we don't need to deal with, but they're not just being thrown out there. Someone's hired a statistician to figure out what these values are, and uh, you know, they've, they've come back with, there, there's some real math behind them. They're not just magically made up. But John's got a confidence level of 90% and a margin of error of 5%. How could he increase his confidence level? Say 90% is not good enough. Maybe he wants a not, maybe this is a medical trial and he wants to make sure that 99.9% .9 of his data is, is accurate. Because you really don't want to start testing things on people if you're not sure, right? How could he uh, make his confidence level higher? Yeah. He could lie. Uh, yeah, but of course, someone's going to double check, hopefully, before he's allowed to do some, uh, anything meaningful with medical testing. Well, you remember when I was talking about the different schools, and I said, uh, you know, how, how good is it to go and interview the basketball team about how tall they are? Right? What was wrong? Sure, Chelsea? Yeah, that's what you want to do, is one way you could do it is, you could increase the number of people because if you had asked more people, you'd be more confident about your results. So that's where the word confidence level comes from, the term. You'll be more confident with more of your data in there, and that's the first thing we could do. Um, what if we said we want to reduce the margin of error? 5% is too much. What if we want to shrink it down? Well, what's the opposite of something having lots of errors? Have being a lot of rights, okay. So or it's more accurate or more correct. Okay? So how do you make this more accurate? What's that? Will it be more accurate if you do that? More like more data. More data, yep. Yeah, that's simple as it is. We would just increase the number of people. If you want to reduce your margin of error, then you should increase the number of people. Okay, so the last question. If we make the margin of error smaller, what happens to the confidence interval? So, for example, you could look at any of your previous ones, like uh, the one we started with. Maybe this poll, instead of 1%, what happens, or sorry, instead of 2.5%, what happens if they dropped it to 1%? What would happen to that confidence interval? Those values, what do you think? Sorry? It would become closer. Less error means the, the interval is going to be closer together. So if it comes closer, um, the size of that confidence interval, we'd say, gets smaller. So one of the goals in the unit is for you to learn to be good consumers of statistics. That's some of the things where that's where we're going to leave it at is that you can read that sort of a claim and sort of understand how those pieces fit together.